Welcome to worship from beautiful Savior Lutheran in Waukesha, Wisconsin. I'm Peter Schmidt. I have the great privilege of serving as pastor here at Beautiful Savior. I want to thank you so very, very much for making it a priority to join us for worshiping our Lord this day. I have a question for you. Have you ever done a home renovation project? Before you begin ripping things up, you already have in mind what you want it to look like. Now, what about your life in general? Do you have a picture of what you want to be? I'm not talking about weight and height and things like that. I'm talking about attitudes. What would you like to be like? Today, we're going to talk about how God the Holy Spirit does a marvelous work of transformation in our lives, renewing our minds, if you will, so we can reflect the joy of Jesus. Our worship begins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, so that we can, with reverence, serve you. Since we are gathered to hear God's word and call upon him in prayer and praise, Let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, in holy baptism you declared us to be your children and gathered us into your one holy church in which you daily and richly forgive us our sins and grant us new life through your Spirit. Be in our midst, enliven our faith, and graciously receive our prayer and praise. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. is our cornerstone on him alone we build with his true saints alone the courts of heaven are filled on his great love our hopes we place of present grace and joys above oh then with hymns of praise these hallowed courts shall ring our voices we will raise three in one to sing and thus proclaim in joyful song both loud and long that glorious name hear gracious god do now and evermore draw near Accept each faithful vow And all your children hear And more and more On those who pray each holy day Your blessing for Here may we gain from heaven The grace which we implore And may that grace once given It's time to get into our family story through our scripture readings. Our first reading is from Isaiah chapter 51. The Lord says through Isaiah, Listen to me, you who pursue righteousness and who seek the Lord. Look to the rock from which you were cut and to the quarry from which you were hewn. 
Look to Abraham, your father, and to Sarah, who gave you birth. When I called him, he was only one man, and I blessed him and made him many. The Lord will surely comfort Zion and will look with compassion on all her ruins. He will make her deserts like Eden, her wastelands like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness will be found in her, thanksgiving and the sound of singing. Listen to me, my people. Hear me, my nation. Instruction will go out from me. My justice will become a light to the nations. My righteousness draws near speedily. My salvation is on the way, and my arm will bring justice to the nations. The islands will look to me and wait in hope for my arm. Lift up your eyes to the heavens. Look at the earth beneath. The heavens will vanish like smoke. The earth will wear out like a garment, and its inhabitants die like flies. But my salvation will last forever. My righteousness will never fail. Our second reading is from Romans chapter 11 and chapter 12. St. Paul writes, O oh, the depth of the riches of the wisdom and knowledge of God! How unsearchable his judgments and his paths beyond tracing out! Who has known the mind of the Lord? Or who has been his counselor? Who has ever given to God that God should repay them? For from him and through him and for him are all things. To him be the glory forever. Amen. Therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. For by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourselves more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment, in accordance with the faith God has distributed to each of you. For just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function, so in Christ we, though many, form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. We have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. If it is serving, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. If it is to encourage, then give encouragement. If it is giving, then give generously. If it is to lead, do it diligently. If it is to show mercy, do it cheerfully. And our final reading for this day is from Matthew chapter 16. When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say the Son of Man is? They replied, Some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others, Jeremiah or one of the prophets. But what about you, he asked, who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Jesus replied, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my Father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Who sustains and comforts us
welcome to Puppet Time with Pastor. I'm here with our good friends Mac and Jack. Or are you Mac and I'm Jack? I always get confused. Yeah, we're not going to tell. <laughs> You're not going to tell. Well, how about if you tell me this? Did you guys just begin school a couple of days ago? Yeah, first week of school. Only a couple of days. Glad it was only two. Yeah, me too. Not ready for a full week yet. Yeah, still working on the sleep pattern. Still working on the sleep pattern? How long did you stay up? Yeah, well, I was supposed to go to bed at 10 o'clock. Yeah, 10 o'clock during the summer. But we didn't always do that. Nope, sometimes stayed up really, really late. Mm, how late? We're not going to tell. <laughs> You're not going to tell. Well, it's kind of hard getting up for school, isn't it? Um, so how's this year going? Well, to use the Bible verse, I'm working on having my mind transformed. Yeah, by the renewing of my mind. You are being transformed by the renewing of your mind? Yeah, that's what the Bible verse said. I want to be transformed. My mind renewed. Um, so what does it exactly mean? It's me. Yeah, but it sounds good. <laughs> that happens sometimes with Bible passages, doesn't it? We might learn those things, but what they actually mean, hmm, well, let's think about this one. So we're in Romans chapter 12, and it, Paul talks about don't conform any longer to the pattern of this world. What does that mean? Yeah, we're in the world. Didn't God create the world? Yeah, and when he created it, it was good. Yeah, that's true. The world is God's, and when he did create it, it is good. But you see, when Paul's talking about the world here, he's talking about the world after sin, and he's talking about how people in the world act after sin. And what happens is people don't necessarily think about God first or other people first. They don't love God with all their heart, soul, mind, and strength, nor do they always love their neighbor as themselves. Yeah, that's for sure. Sure, it's a lot of yelling and arguing. Yeah, we do that sometimes, too. Yeah, sorry, bro. You're right. You guys do that sometimes, too. But you see, what happens is sins affected the world. So instead of people thinking about God first, they think about themselves. It's like you say, Pastor. Yeah, little s, little n, big fat capital I. Yep, that's what sin is, big fat capital I. So when Paul is talking about being transformed by the renewing of your mind, not thinking like that anymore, He's talking about, well, having the mind of Jesus. Well, that'd be great in school. Yeah, if I had a mind like Jesus, I wouldn't have to study anything. Yeah, he's God. I would know everything. Well, that's not exactly what he's talking about. The mind of Christ, if you will, or thinking like Jesus, is thinking about, well, how God created us to be. Lord, what do you want me to do? How can I love you with all of my heart, soul, mind, and strength? And how can I love my neighbor as myself? You see, when the Holy Spirit works that in us, well, that's how the passage goes on. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. It's good, pleasing, and perfect will. Yeah, that would be great. If only we could all do that. But I still mess up. Yeah, me too. Well, that's why we have to know the wondrous will of God in Jesus. Why did Jesus come and die on the cross for us? to forgive us so we can go to heaven someday. And when he rose on Easter, well, he made clear that's all true. And so also to know God, be transformed, is also to know the wonder of his love and that he's a God who would much rather forgive than condemn. And so we come to him and we say, Lord, help me to be what you want me to be. Holy Spirit, work in me so I can be that person who is transformed. Renewed. Yep. Transformed and renewed. Being those people who share the love of Jesus by living the love of Jesus. Well, we'll talk a little bit more about that and maybe help clear some things up even some more during the message. But before we do, let's sing the hymn. Indeed. Let's sing the hymn. Jesus Christ, her Lord, 
Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now I want you to take a look at our verse for the week. It's from Romans chapter 12. St. Paul writes, Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Now, if you look carefully at this picture, you see that in the background, there's some sort of home renovation going on. Now, if you have been a member of Beautiful Savior for a while, you may have heard me talk over the years about some of my home improvement projects. Now, some things have gone very, very well. Other things, mm, let's just say not so much. But actually, Ellen and I are in the midst of some renovation projects now. Uh, the wallpaper removal project, which was started months ago, is just about done. We have had a new window installed. We'll be ripping out carpeting, doing painting, all these different things, transforming things, making the house look different. Because, well, as the family is expanding with grandchildren and the like, well, we want our home to be a nice open place, a welcoming place. It's not just our home that I want to be that way. I have a dream. Well, take a look at this picture. Last week, Ellen and I had the privilege of being on vacation up by Teal Lake in northern Wisconsin, about a half hour east of Hayward, Wisconsin, and we were staying at this cabin, cabin number seven at Back of Beyond Resort. And you see on the right side, the view toward the lake. It was a beautiful spot. And I have to admit that when we're in a cottage, you know what I do? I think about home renovations. And it's not because I'm particularly good at those things. And it's certainly not that I bring tools along and decide, hey, I'm just going to bust a hole in this wall or change the electrical with this or that. No, I start dreaming and I start thinking about what I would like for my family. And I think about how wonderful it would be to have a family cottage where we could all go, and maybe even at Thanksgiving time, everyone be there together, and we have this fire going on, and maybe even a little snow in the background, and then of course fall with the colors, springtime as things are popping out, but then of course summer vacation, and everyone together. And so I start dreaming about 
hey, if I own this cottage, what kind of things would I want to have happen to it so that it would be a great place transformed for the family to experience the joy of family life together? Now, why do I do that? It's because of this. The power of positive experience. Why do I care so much about life by the lake? Why do we take a vacation, it seems, every year by some lake up north? Because I grew up, up until I was about eight years of age, with my older sister, my older brother, my mom and dad, and my mom's parents going up to the Hayward area. And we would rent a cottage by Lake Couture. And I have such beautiful, wonderful memories of that. Great experiences. So much so that when Ellen and I got married, had kids, moved back here to Wisconsin, both of us said, you know, we want this for our kids. We want them to experience up north. It was a positive experience for us. Now, let's be honest about it. Um, if we've had negative experiences, who wants those things to repeat, to pass those along? If we do, there's a serious issue going on. In fact, if we have some negative things, we want to get rid of those things. But we always know there's something better. And so I want you to think about what are those positive experiences in your life, the things that you want to pass along. Do you remember these words from Isaiah 51? The Lord says, listen to me, you who pursue righteousness and who seek the Lord. Look to the rock from which you were cut and to the quarry from which you were hewn. Look to Abraham, your father, and to Sarah, who gave you birth. When I called him, he was only one man, and I blessed him and made him many. See what the Lord is doing. He's calling his people to go back and think about their history, those positive examples. And the positive examples of Abraham and Sarah always center on the Lord working in their life. Do you have anyone in your life that is that kind of example? For me, I was blessed with great grandparents and parents, some wonderful teachers, a lot of positive people in my life who brought me closer and closer to Jesus as they would teach me more about what it means to follow him, to be identified with him, to walk in the faith. Those are positive things, things that the Lord would want us to pass along. What about you? Can you think about people in your life that were those positive influences and what kind of things about them do you want to pass along? Not only emulate in your life, but then pass along to another generation. It kind of comes down to this. What do you want out of life? It's a very important question, isn't it? What do you want out of life? There used to be a very popular bumper sticker that said, the one with the most toys wins. And let's be honest about it. For some people, what they want out of life is a bunch of stuff. For other people, what they want out of life is never to have any problems. Everything's perfectly smooth. And for other people, they just want power and control of things and success. And for some people, well, they keep moving from one thing to another. But you see, somewhere along the line, you kind of have to prioritize, don't you? And you have to determine what is it that is really important to me. More than anything else, what do I want? But you see, the question then is this, how do I get there? How do I get there? Now, I mentioned that Ellen and I are in the midst of some home renovation projects. And one of those, again, is ripping out some carpet. Now, I know how to rip out carpet. I've done it before. It's really not that difficult a thing. But for the fun of it, well, if you're looking for information on something, how to do something, where do you go? Yeah, Google it. Or you go on YouTube. So I went on YouTube to look for videos just to see people's different takes on how to best rip out carpet. It was amazing how many different ways people gave of ripping out carpet. I'm sitting there going, really? This should be rather obvious. But do you see what's happened in our day and age? 
there are so many voices out there, so many different experts, so many different opinions, that in some ways it's kind of hard for us to even think for ourselves and make decisions about things. And then when it comes to spiritual things, about life transformation, and we find ourselves in a position with, I really need to change that. I need to be transformed, my mind renewed, if you will. How do I go about it? When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say that the Son of Man is? Do you see the first thing Jesus does there? He gets us to stop and think, what do we think about Jesus? And the disciples answer. They replied, some say John the Baptist, others Elijah, and still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. But what about you, he asked. Who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. Jesus replied, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my Father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. So Jesus gives us the answer. He's the way, the truth, and the life, the Messiah. How do you get to where you want to be? Well, let's go back to where do you want to be? And when it comes down to it, don't we all want to be in that thing we call love? I'm not talking about infatuation with another person. I'm just talking about living in true love. Not only when people just get along and living at peace, but understanding that people love me and at the source of it, that God actually loves me. And I love God and so I'm back in sync, if you will, with how I was created to be. How do I get there? It's not based on all the stuff I do first for God, but it always comes back to Jesus, doesn't it? The Messiah, what he came to do through his sacrificial death after his perfect life, where on the cross he offered himself as a sacrifice to cover the guilt of our sin. And when he rose on Easter, he made clear this is all true. Whoever believes in me won't perish, but will have eternal life. And guess what? By the power of the Holy Spirit, beginning in baptism, we now come into church. Now, what does that mean, this word church? It's used only a couple of times in Matthew's account. And you know what we could maybe put in there besides church? Technically, it means people being called out. But there's something much greater there. Because as we see it described, it really means family. It's a shame when people sometimes complain well, I'm spiritual, but I just don't like organized religion. Well, I don't like the organized church. Well, what does that mean? Because the fact of the matter is, everything needs organization. Maybe what it means is you or someone you know who has used that phrase has just had a bad experience with people not acting as family, not treating you in love. And so you had a difficult time maybe to living in love. But Jesus came to bring people into church, into family. Listen again then to what he says to Peter. Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my Father in heaven. It was a marvelous revelation of the Holy Spirit. What it means that Jesus is the Messiah. And the life-changing, the life-transforming, the renewing of the mind implications of that. Then he goes on, I tell you that you are Peter. And on this rock I will build my church and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. Now there has been a lot written about that verse. And some people say, well, this is talking about Peter being the head of the organized church. Some people go so far as to say Jesus now has, has made him the first pope, if you will. But as we look at the scriptures, no, that structure really is, is not there. And Peter kind of gives us the answer in his own writing. In 1 Peter chapter 2, listen what Peter says. As you come to him, Jesus, the living stone, 
rejected by humans, but chosen by God and precious to him, you also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For in scripture it says, See, I lay a stone in Zion, a chosen and precious cornerstone, and the one who trusts in him will never be put to shame. What a beautiful picture there. Peter makes clear who we build on, it's Jesus. And if you're building, that cornerstone has to be just where it needs to be so everything lines up perfectly. And so we build on Jesus. But notice what Peter says, we're living stones. What does that mean? Well, my parents grew up in the Depression, and my dad did a lot of home renovations. I obviously did not get that gene as far as being able to do those things really well. But I do remember my dad's workshop. And my dad had a tendency to save a lot of things and whatever he could use for something, instead of necessarily going out and buying something new, he would do it. That gene I've picked up, where I have some scraps of things around, let's make the most of it and let's use what we can use. You know, this is what God does with you and me. The Holy Spirit making us into living stones. You see, with those living stones, for some of us, yeah, transformation needs to take place with this or that. Maybe we have a fuse which is a little shorter than it should be. Or maybe we have a tendency to use some language which shouldn't be used. Or to look at people in ways we shouldn't. And those things need to be tweaked and fixed. And so there's some transformation that takes there. But then there are other cases where our life has just been a total disaster. And we've wasted it going after a lot of different things and living the complete opposite of the way that now the Holy Spirit has helped us to see through the scriptures, this is where God wants me to be. What does God do? He doesn't scrap us. Rather, he takes us and he changes us through his spirit. And he says, look, I'm taking that stone too. And there's a place for it here in my church, in my family. This is how God does transformation pro, uh, projects, home renovation projects, if you will. Because again, what is it that Jesus came to do for us? To bring us home. To bring us into the family of God. Now, think about it. There is a show I like watching on the Magnolia Network. I don't watch it every week, but if I happen to be home and it's on, I'll step back and watch it. It's called Main Cabin Masters. And it's about a group of people in this company that go around and they renovate cabins in Maine by lakes, beautiful lake cottages. But we're talking about normal lake cottages, not talking about those million dollar mansions, but just basic cottages. And they fix them up, they renovate, they transform doing these home renovation projects with a budget which is very reasonable not making something into, uh, again, million dollar mansion that most of us will never ever be able to afford, but taking something and in a lot of cases, using what is there, maybe transforming some things, but putting it into something now that's been renovated, something new, so that the family can continue to enjoy family experiences. You know what? This is what our Lord does in renovating us through his spirit, getting rid of the bad stuff and shoring us up through his spirit. And why does he do it? Because again, it comes back to family. Now, at the end of this show, they do something very important. You always get to see how they've renovated things and how beautiful it looks. I have yet to see some home improvement show where at the end everything's been transformed and the people come in and they see it for the first time and go, um, oh, that's interesting. No, everyone's always really thrilled with it. And so it is in this program. But then right at the end of the program, you know what they do? They hand over the keys to the owners so that now they can enjoy the property. Now, do you remember what Jesus said to Peter? 
Jesus said, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Well, what does that mean? Well, those of us who own homes, well, really anything, our cars, whatever, we have keys. And for the most part, what do we use those keys for? Something very important to open the thing up and to use it for positive things. Oh, yes, there are, of course, times where we need to secure things and lock things. So if I have a cabin, for instance, and I know that there are some bad things around, I'm going to lock the thing up because I don't want bad things coming in. Oh, just like the evil one is described as this ferocious lion going around looking for things to devour. So there are times where the church, if you will, has to use this key, the family has to use this key to lock things up and say, we can't let this sinful influence in here. But for the most part, what do we do? Oh, it's the key of forgiveness that says, welcome. You see, just like I want to have a family cottage, if you will, where everyone can come and feel welcome and then say, well, look, we're family. And maybe other people will come and the family continues to increase. Man, how good that is. Isn't that the church? Isn't that the family of believers here on this earth? What Jesus has done, making it possible for us to be renovated, for us to be transformed, the renewing of our minds so we can know the wonder and joy of the Lord's salvation and what matters to us, where we want to go more than anything else is to follow Jesus wherever that might be. And as we follow Jesus, how do we get there? With Jesus. And so we come to our Lord today and we say, Lord, transform us. Renew us through your spirit, through the word, through the sacrament, so that we can be that truly inviting place. Take us and do the home renovations that need to be done. Because we want to be that place where we experience your love and peace and joy. And we want other people to experience that too. People who maybe have never ever experienced anything like it but have this feeling that there has to be something better. But how do I get there? Through Jesus. But here's the marvelous thing. You know, sometimes we think about this life here in two different parts. We have real life where we do work and school and all that, and then we have vacation where we get away from things. And then we kind of think about things from an eternal perspective that way too, where we kind of think about, well, life here on this earth, this is you know, the work, the permanent experience, so to speak, and heaven's like vacation. It's really just the opposite. You know what? This now on this earth is vacation because it's not permanent. But there is gonna be this marvelous day where our vacation here will come to an end and we get to go to that permanent home, that place where the master builder has prepared just for you, for me, for the whole family, so we can be together in his peace and his perfect love. Oh, what a marvelous day that will be. And so we pray, don't conform to the pattern of this world. Lord, keep me from doing that, but transform me by the renewing of my mind so that I will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will, and rejoice then in the wonder of being a part of his family in that perfect home, not just for a time, but for all eternity. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Presence and take.
Would you please join me in a word of prayer? Most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you that in your love and mercy, you have safely brought us to this point in the day. All of us come with our different experiences. In some cases, what's going on in our life right now is less than positive. In other cases, we feel extremely blessed. Whatever it is, Lord, we are with you. And we especially thank you that you want to be with us. It is not who we are as far as all the things we've done for you that makes us worthy to be in your presence. But it is your amazing love, mercy, and compassion that would call us through your word to come to you and rejoice in what was begun in holy baptism, being a part of your family. And so we pray that whatever renovation continues to be needed in us, that you, Holy Spirit, would do that work. Where there are things that have to be totally gutted and ripped out, do that work, as difficult and painful as it may be. In other cases, where there are some annoying habits and other things we know aren't right, Lord, work in us there too. And work in us this desire to live like Jesus as we walk with you, Lord Jesus. We pray for our world and all of its needs. In particular, we continue to pray for the people of Maui who are terribly affected by that ferocious wildfire. We ask for all of those who are in the midst of mourning and grief and questioning as far as even where relatives are, that you would bring them the comfort and peace only you can give, especially as people are questioning how would a loving God allow such a disaster to happen. We ask that you would be with the people of Emmanuel Lutheran Church and School in Maui, that you would bless their efforts as they work with Lutheran Church Charities and the California, Nevada, Hawaii district of our Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, to bring much needed aid and care. We ask that for us, as we have the ability, that gifts we would offer for relief would get to just the right place and be used in a beneficial way not just for people to have the physical needs met, but also that they experience the wonder of this being done in the name and love of Jesus. Gracious Lord, we pray for all we know, going through hardships with physical or emotional ailments, we ask that you would lay your hand of healing and strength upon them. For those we know who are in the midst of questioning and doubting, we ask that you would bring your answers. For those who are trapped in the prison of addiction, Grant them relief for all those who are walking through the valley of the shadow of death. Give them a sure sense of your presence and your peace. Gracious Lord, hear us concerning what we pray in our hearts. And as we look toward that day when you return, teach us to number our days aright, that when you, Lord Jesus, return, we will be found as good and faithful servants. Into your hands, then, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who has also taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and grant you his peace. Amen. Thank you all very, very much for making it a priority for worship this day. God be with you. Have an excellent rest of the day.